where they cross seven times, you have the acupuncture points of your body. What you have, she has. It's that simple. And you're standing on one of her meridians. And what that does is actually, what I have found it does, that did for me, is it opened my heart. My tears just wants to flow. If you resist that, it causes agitation. You could feel either. Same as Oregon. So, the draconians are the ones, according to the Space Brothers, and I cannot tell you if this is true or not, I haven't looked into it. This is the information they have given me, that, I, that came through the black holes from the parallel universe. It became necessary to set this game of separation up again. So, two groups of beings that had played the light and the undeveloped light in the parallel universe that had already healed back into oneness, into source, which is light, were invited in by the 13 lords that was intending on birthing our universe. Those that had played the undeveloped light are known as the Aku. The Hopi draw them as being beings with, with wings. They are the bird tribes that the Native Americans speak of. They are the Aku. And their forte was working with the light. You see? And the other group, because you know, that's usually the side that's working with the masculine component is the one that, that plays the undeveloped light. We have the same thing here. Lucifer manipulated the flower of life into this format to form the separation. So what happened is that the, the Aku were invited in and they formed the sacred geometry of our universe. They formed the steel framework of the building. And the Sekhmet, the lion beings, the cat beings for which the Sphinx is made, or the temple of Sekhmet in Egypt, came in and put the bricks in place in between this, the steel framework. They formed the sacred geometry into matter denser and denser and denser. It is and the sixth dimension where sacred geometry forms into the matter we are familiar with, which is the dense form of light. Okay, so now we have billions of years ago these guys coming in, the princes of darkness, the draconians. Who's underneath them? We're, Lucifer's the head of the dragon. We've now got the two front feet. <coughs> We got some wings <coughs> there too, okay? Because these draconian guys are big. And yes, they have wings. Don't think that people have to look at, like you to be people. So below them, we now get, um, and by the way, not all the ancient dragons that were, that, that were drawn were of these guys, but this is how they look. So beneath them, we now found the reptilians. Our closest reptilian neighbors are in Orion. If you really want to know what's happening out there, you must know these things. You read your politics in the Times. They tell you what they want you to know. In addition to that, every th our politics here on the Earth are interconnected with the, policies, with, the, with the policies in this part of the galaxy. The reptilian beings of Orion, dominated by queens always, have domineered and in a, in a subtle way controlled the minds of man for the longest time, for hundreds of thousands of years. They have a weapon that they call Mach, M-A-C-H. Any of you seen the movie Total Recall? That's their weapon. They wipe clean the minds of man. And they wiped clean a portion of the beings from Sirius. These beings became known as the Dach soldiers, D-A-C-H, Dach soldiers, dog soldiers. That's the dog star. The method of dog is eat your enemy, cannibalism. You eat, you use your enemy as a food source. So, so anyway, they became the lackeys for these people and they conquered other races. One of these races are known as the Greys, that come the closest to it all over the galaxy, but they're the closest is Zeta Reticuli, which is one of the side stars in the belt of Orion. The Greys are the ones that um, are on the movie Communion with the huge black eyes and the locust-like like faces, like a praying mantis face, almost no nose and, and mouth. 
they have a very gray skin. Abductees always remember the stench of them because in fact they excrete through their skin. I speak to strange people in my line of work and one of the people worked inside the CIA and was trying to get out of it and came to me and asked me what he was supposed to do and all the rest of it. He said, he told me all about the, the beings inside there that they're working with. They call the Syrians high knee heads because they have these big heads that look like someone's backside. And um, you can see these skulls. I just um, was in Toronto and they had one of the King Tut exhibits and you could see the skulls in the mummies were with these big heads because King Tut, King Tut, King Akhenaten, all those guys came from Sirius. They came actually from the law. They want out at this point, but they are under their control. They have no feeling body. Their race is dying out because they have cloned their species for so long that the parent stock is getting weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. So they made a deal with our tail of the dragon who walks amongst us, which is the Illuminati or the world secret government and is in every government that matters. These are the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers and these kinds of guys that control this planet. And there are many more, okay, but those are guys that you know, so I, I say that. Um, they control our medical profession. They make you sick to get you to come to them to make you better because it's a multi-million dollar business. They tell you when you have wars, they tell you when you have depressions, and they tell you when you may now come out of the depression. They tell you when you have famine, and you will become very familiar with them because they are planning on coming out of the closet in the year 2003. In preparation for which the EEC is all standing there nicely waiting. They are coming out of the closet soon. They already on America, they have put it on our money. New world order. People that come in now to the United States don't swear allegiance to the United States, they swear it to the United Nations, which is a front for these people. We have airports that say New World Order Airport on the airport. They're coming out of the closet. You will become very familiar with them, folks. They intend to scare you enough to make you want to have them lead you. They have engineered viruses. They have many, many ways that they have prepared between now and the year 2003. And those are the things I promised her I wouldn't tell you, so I'm not going to tell you. You'll have to get the tapes. <laughs> so. <laughs> so anyway, the Greys made a deal with our world government. Hey, folks, technology. Would put you 150 years ahead of the average pop population. Of course, the greys are 2,000 years ahead of us. And the, the reptilians in, in Orion are 3,000 years ahead of us because they're pure intellect. But you're the wealthy ones because you feel you have love. That is your ultimate defense. So they came in and made a deal with them. And the Greys said to them, you know, our race is dying out. If we can abduct your people, and we'll only do a couple, I mean 150,000 or so, ha, huh, it's gone way over that, way over that. We want to do experimentation to make a hybrid race. Now, they've had a hard time keeping the hybrid race alive. Plus, there's a war going on in heaven. The war is clearly described in many scriptures. The Mayans speak about it. The Egyptians speak about it. It is currently going on. I was in the desert on a vision quest uh, about two, three weeks ago. I could not believe it, that people can't see what's going on. They're shooting at each other up there. Nobody seems to notice. 62% of the population this year is mind controlled. It's done through your televisions through creating a holographic waveform that you don't even notice, that makes you afraid and makes you just, just do your job. We'll let you spend, we'll give you enough food, we'll tell you you have a good standard of living, you go home and you don't ask questions. And when you ask us questions, we're going to give you silly answers and you have to believe us anyway. Such as this is a weather balloon. Okay? So you have to believe us anyway. Now, we're the prize. Now you know why we're the prize. We cannot let this happen. 
We must rise in consciousness. Every attempt in the book is being made to suppress your consciousness. Fluoridation, chlorinization of your waters. They have equipment from their radio towers that can beam radionics at you and affect the very mood that you feel. Did you not see how the Iraqi soldiers groveled before the Americans as they politely waved them past? They were beaming radionics at them, fear thought forms. I've had them do it to me, I know what that feels like. It doesn't feel too good, but I will tell you. Tomorrow you will learn about God mind. Anything surface mind can create, let alone half their surface mind. They don't even have the other half. Anything they can create in your cells is lodged the power that is 10,000 times stronger. God mind. You must know this. How much time? The best kept secret? The best kept secret in the universe is who you are. It took 22 different genetic components from other planetary systems to make a being as fantastic as you. The, this excretions of the endocrine systems, they have tried and tried and tried and tried to duplicate. They cannot. In fact, they use it like a drug, human endocrine excretions. They use it like a drug for a moment they feel. And it's like a drug to them. That too is part of the whole ugly picture. And if you've taken a look at how many people we lose every year, missing, the numbers are a fraction of what it really is. We've been sold out. The people that are our world government. Someday I'll come in here and tell you where the world Rothschild comes from and Rockefeller comes from, but I would have to trace the whole thing back. So you see where these people come from. And, and I just named two families because, I mean, they're, they're common knowledge. Others I don't even want to come near, okay? Um, these people are not human in their soul's evolution. They're not human souls. Now, a lot of you are not either. Because a lot of you have been sent here like wise men coming from afar, bringing gifts from other far off higher realms to birth this planet into Christ consciousness. That's who you are. That's why you don't take authority well. I mean, that's why, you know, you were never, you never liked it when you were told to eat up your beans or the kids in China were starving. You tried to give your beans to the kids. You know, you don't take authority well. That's why you feel like strangers wherever you go. That's why you dream of always being abandoned or lost or not knowing where home is. You know, that's my constant nightmare. I say, okay, okay, I know this isn't home. Please don't let me dream these dreams anymore. And I keep dreaming. I'm lost, I'm away from home, and I have no home. And I try and pretend to fit in and be one of the guys. That's my constant theme of my nightmares. Sound familiar to some of you? That's why when you were a little kid, you stood in your parents' home and you looked around and you said, I've landed in a madhouse. <laughs> this is life. These are the games people play. God, get me out of here. I had six crib deaths before I was two. I, I couldn't stand it. I could not stand it. And they had to put somebody day and night and slap me on the fanny, you know, and get me going and breathe in my mouth and do anything they can to get me. By the way, fanny in America means bottom, just in case we have a difficulty with language here. <laughs> I, I, and rubber does not mean eraser. So, big problems. Um, so anyway, you know, they, they, because I kept leaving. Have you had the feelings like, what am I doing amongst these crazy people? It's going to get worse. Guess what? The Germans did some studies in low e electromagnetic fields in space. And they found that people turned into ravenous animals that attacked each other on sight. That was the effect of low electromagnetic fields. What did I tell you earlier tonight? We're losing our electromagnetic fields. 
I told my students in 1996, the ones that came out to my home in Oregon, I said, you must find out who you are this year. In 97, you must start to live who you are, because by 98, all you will be able to do is maintain your balance. If, all, if that's all you can do, you've made major accomplishments. Because in 1998, something happened. From 87 to 97, consciousness doubled on this planet every year. This whole situation in itself is completely new, which is why all of our universe's attention is now focused on us. When you focus attention on something, you empower it. It is propelling us forward even faster. From 87 to 97, it doubled every year. From this year, through the year 2011, it will be times 10 each year. It won't only be the West Coast guys that are nuts. <laughs> <laughs> you will find that if change is ex resisted, there is extreme chaos. You will also find that where you are open to growth and your loved ones are open to at least listening, that they're just ast astronomically shooting up in growth. It's fantastic. It's certainly interesting. Um, in the year 2012, it will be times 100. I want to just tell you something. The Earth also has the dodecahedron with the 12 facets, which is her masculine brain. Her masculine brain is in her middle world. Her female brain, which is the 13, the dodecahedron with its 12 pentagons, with the 13th pentagon within, has been suppressed. Your right brain is suppressed. Hers is suppressed. It's pushed into the underworld. Tomorrow that we will, we will look very, very carefully at that. The Earth cannot ascend in the year 2013 with her suppressed in the underworld. I prayed and prayed and prayed to God. I said, God, what's going to happen? We can't ascend unless our goddess world, which is Hades, not the underworld, comes forth and stands side by side with the male. And we, we spoke today in our class how males have to go through, through second death, like Christ did for three and a half days in the tomb. The Pista Sophia said he went into the goddess realm where he lived the seven initiations of the goddess that she would have given him in the seven levels of the middle world if she stood there. Oh, sweetie, you have jet lag. No, I'm okay. Are you okay? Because I got pretty tired about six every day. Because okay. if you really want to sleep, there's a soft couch upstairs, and I will understand. Okay. I'll wake you up for ceremony. Okay. We cannot ascend without her. She has to rise into the middle world. That's why at the moment we have to go down in order to go up. We have to descend in order to ascend. We are going to have some major hurdles between now and the year 2013. There will be three days of darkness, actually three and a half, during which time, put away at least three days of supplies. I would really like it if you could put away two years of supplies, but I don't suppose I can ask that of you. So put away three days of supplies, okay? During those three days, there will be darkness. Do not go out of your house. Close your windows, close your doors, and stay inside and do not even go out for supplies. When will that be? People will go nuts. The earliest it could be is this month. The latest it will be. <laughs> it's true. I, I foresee it certainly within the next five years. Oh, it's just started. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <gee. laughs> well, unbeknownst to my son, I, ch I stocked up with chocolates at the cottage, so I think he'll be taken care of. <laughs> um, so, you know, I was saying, God, when will she come forth? What will cause that, um, It's one of two things, okay? There are psychics going around saying something. I have not picked this up, but I did pick up, actually, that something big globally was going to happen on the 24th of August. Some psychics are saying on the 24th of August we will go into the trail of, of um, what they say is a planet. 
that has gone by that nobody informs us about these little arts and nans. Okay? In fact, somebody recently discovered this planet and tried to name it, and they said, oh, we already know about it. But that we're going to actually touch. It's, it's mostly gaseous, but it has a core, and that we're going to touch it in our outer atmosphere. Honey, I have not, I have not seen that. I, I have not seen that happening. Um, but we will go into three days of darkness when we go into the photon belt. Remember we discussed that today, how it lies perpendicular to our course, and every 13,000 years we go in, and there's major cataclysms. This time hopefully we'll go in a little more peacefully, particularly after our ceremony tonight. Okay? Because last time was Atlantis. This time we're on the deadline. From 98 to the year 2003, we're going to go into it. And we're going to have the three days of darkness. So if they're right, it could be that. If they're not right, I know this is going to happen. Um, so what I said is, when will the goddess mind be set free so we can ascend in the year 2013? And it said something so sacred that it said I was not supposed to tell anybody. And I said, God, you've done an unfair thing. You know I cannot give a good secret. I'm going to tell. I buy my kids presents and then I tell them. Then I have to buy them another one because there's no surprise, so I tell them again. And this goes on sometimes four times because good, good secrets cannot be kept by either myself or my daughter. Bad ones I'll keep. Your stuff I will keep, I promise. But, um, so I, I will tell you the secret. We will suffer much. The probable future says that at the end of the year 2003, a seven-year treaty that we will sign with the Arab nations will be broken. The Arabs have since December of 92 made a pact with the Chinese to take over the world. These things are on my tapes. Okay, I have many times in visions seen huge tankers leave Chinese harbors on its way to Saddam Hussein. When Clinton was pushing him to get the attention of his love life, you know, um, they told Saddam, don't go for it. You're only about 60% ready. When you're 100% <coughs> ready, they'll be 100% ready the end of the year 2003. And they plan on taking over the entire Western world. And um, I, I have seen where their missiles are. I mean, I have seen their the underground caverns where they have their nuclear submarines. I've seen Iran's nuclear submarines, yes. So I've, I've seen these things. We are heading into for some hard times. Food will be in a shortage. Go to your local Mormon church and have those folks teach you how to properly prepare they have prepared for this two-year time for a long time. You must put some food away. But there are good ways and stupid ways to do it, and they know the good ways. So get the information from them. They'll be more than happy to share it with you. So we are going to go through such hardships between now and the year 2012 that on December the 21st of the year 2012, all the women of the planet, as one, will raise their voice in prayer and say, God, enough. No more killing of a single human being, which has become a rare thing indeed. No more killing. Enough. Because all the women, as one, will raise their voice on that day. Um, the goddess will be set free. This is Zuni Indian work. The Zunis have said that that's the day the sun god comes. The Navajo have said it. The Hopi have said it. The Aboriginals say that that is the day when the earth gets reborn into the fifth world. The, the Maya have said that's the day of Pokavutan coming back. The Inca have said that that is the day Veracocha comes back. Now, to the Maya, Christ consciousness is in the heart. The number for the heart is seven. The heart, the seven-pointed star, and the planet for the Christed being, which they call Pokavutan, the, the planet is Venus. They draw Venus as a seven-pointed star. Seven tomorrow, you will see, is the number for the mind that is lodged in the heart. 
The seven-pointed star Venus, they say, is the Christ coming back. Now, in the year 2012, as a sign of this great event, Venus will move for eight hours right across the Sun. This is a rare event. It does not happen often. It often moves over for a few minutes. It's going across for eight hours. I think it's in June. It is foretelling. And then we go into ascension. There are two probable futures for this ascension to take place. Remember we spoke about the fact that there are two grids, the old fear placed one and the Christ consciousness grid in place? There is a possibility that reality separates. If not enough of us reach Christ consciousness, that is what will happen. And then the prophecies will be fulfilled that is in the New Testament that said, two will be plowing a field, one will be taken and one will remain. Two will be sleeping in a bed, one will be taken and one remain. Have any of you read that? That's when that will happen, if that happens. But we are evolving so rapidly, we might just make the crucial number of 7%. And when we do that, there will be automatic ascension of everybody. Everybody will have automatic ascension. And I know that to us that seems very odd. Because what about retribution? Retribution don't fit, doesn't fit in the perfected scheme of the flower of life, a universe that is only light, only love. You are not your experiences, neither is your brother or sister. You are luminous beings of light filling all of existence, having these experiences. In my, in my lectures in, on level one and level two ascension, we go through the nine steps that you, that you go through when you put your left brain to its proper use. It's become the usurper. Its proper use is to help you see behind the appearances, these appearances of separation. When it sees behind the appearances, you can let go of these things. You can cease to want to have retribution. You can cease to want to have vengeance. You see, complete innocence. This is one of the 12 initiations of Melchizedek, when you can see complete innocence. How much? 10? Okay. You know, um, yes. When you say 7%, do you mean those 7% are higher consciousness souls coming from total unconditional love? Yes. We'll, we'll pull everybody have through. <laughs> Haven't we got that? No. I don't know. I have well, not been told that we have that. I was told that is the critical number. So it's only 7% on this I said, how come 7%? That's not, that's not a fair game. Mm. They said, no. Light is much stronger than the dark. So one person that has gone into Christ consciousness, the effect that they have on the entire planet, on keeping it stable, on all these things, is so much greater than 10 people running around in illusion. So we're talking about a very, very high vibrational frequency yes. of 7%. I mean yes. That's why I urge people. I say, the planet's going to ascend. If you just remove fear, you will ascend with the planet. But that's not good enough. You must become Ascended Masters now. Well, I have gone through the first phase of Ascension, which is life eternal. I no longer age. I mean, you saw today, fire does no longer burn me. Um, that is not for me a problem anymore. I'm into the second phase, which is life more abundant. And I have not gone all the way through the second stage. Because I know that the second stage, if you go all the way through, you shouldn't have to use United Airlines. <laughs> <laughs> you can come and go as the wind. And I must say, I've never tried to come and go as the wind, but because I usually leave my body to go where I need to go. But I, th my body has not materialized, and de well, it has dematerialized and materialized. But it, actually, it has one time. I remember that I was in a state of complete ecstasy. I found myself near my ceiling, and I looked down and I saw the floor and I thought, whoa, this is higher than I've ever off been off the floor. And in fact, many of my patients have done this, okay? I've had them levitate and people go, oh, and run their hands underneath them because they're completely levitated up. Because the law of gravitation has no hold on you when you're in a state of intense praise. 
So I found myself near the ceiling and I went down and then I had to go to my son's basketball game one half an hour away. I got in my car and the next moment I got out of my car and I had traveled half an hour. And you know, it's not the same as manipulation of time. I don't remember the way in between. I don't know how I got there. But it was an accident. And I believe that I have to get to the point where I at will teleport materially before I have completed all the way. The life more abundant, which is the final and last stage. And that's got to be 7% like that? No, it doesn't have to be that high. The advantage of ascending before, and these are fantastic questions, so let me just devote these few minutes to this. The advantage of ascending before the planet, there is no greater service you can render. It pales by comparison to the other work that you do. Nothing is greater work than perfecting that which is within. That's where all true power lies. If you ascend before the planet, we have a frequency prison that has been placed like, an, like a, the veil of darkness is what the scriptures call it, has been placed around our planet. It is being operated from our moon. This isn't our moon. This is a usurper. It is not natural for a, a, a planetary body to rotate the way our moon does. It never shows us its fanny. Never. Because, actually, <laughs> it's got definite man-made objects on the other side. A couple of bumps on its buns. It's, it's got domes and things there. It has been terraformed there. It is a huge computer. It is not natural for us to have periods every 28 days. This is not natural. It causes this bottleneck of souls, this overpopulation. Other planets have it once a year. And so there isn't the overpopulation. The moon is doing that. The Cree have made a prophecy that a time will come when our periods will be once a year. The Hopis say they are pre-lunar. Ah, come to class tomorrow and you'll, you won't want it once a year, you'll want it every month. Most powerful fluid in the universe is your blood, my sister. Tomorrow I will speak about some of these things, but just to continue, the, the Hopis say they're pre-lunar. And I will answer that, okay? They say they're pre-lunar. That's because this moon came here, according to my star brothers, 11,000 years ago. Their history goes back 12,000 years to when they emerged from the other side of the photon belt. So a frequency prison is put around our planet. When you ascend, you tear a huge hole in these idiots' frequency prison that keeps us in low consciousness. It prevents light from accessing us, and it prevents us from asking for assistance. You tear a hole in it. Then if you choose to come back, because after the full ascension, you pass through that river of life and you find yourself standing in front of the ascended masters of light. There are about 9,000 of them. They are all those that have overcome all things while in the flesh. <laughs> I don't think he's there. <laughs> so, so um, those are from all races, all creeds. There are Catholics, there are Jews, there are Hindus. There are um, Sufis. Many Sufi masters have ascended fully. Many Taoists, the women particularly. So you will find these as our ascended masters of light. They're in the upper sixth dimension on our planet. Are they starseeds? They're us. And some of them were certainly starseeded in here to show the way, but some Jewish of them were human. Jewish, yes. Where are you from? Well, I, I am from much higher than that, but my next higher aspect, and I wish I had just five more minutes. Can I tell you how light and love travels from the central sun? But I just want to finish her answer. The love aspect, the feminine goddess component of our universe, travels from the central sun, and it goes from there to Hunapku. Hunapku is a sun that is right next to it. Hunapku is the giver of movement and measure. Measure is the masculine, movement is the feminine. 
The, at Chichen Itza, it shows the statue of Hunapku, and his tears go this way and down, and this way and down, and that's exactly how you would schematically illustrate how light and love separates. So the love component comes from our central sun to Hunapku. It goes, say, schematically, to the left, to the mother galaxy. The mother galaxy, which is the god of the galaxy, is the galaxy of Andromeda. Much of this information that I'm giving you comes from the Andromedans and the Pleiadians. And the Pleiadians are on both sides of the fence right now. So are the Syrians. From there it goes to Antares. Antares is where my next highest aspect is. To us it is a sun, but on higher dimensions it's a planet. And it had a yellow sky. I remembered that when I was born. From there it comes to a mother um, planet, which I have not found the name of. I've not accessed the name. From there it goes to our other little sun. We are a binary sun system. You'll know that in about four years and wonder why NASA forgot to tell you. But it's on the other side of our sun. In four years it'll start to come out the bottom quadrant, right quadrant. Through the little sun, through our sun, and then it comes through our pineal, which is our inner sun. Here's the path of how love follows. So I come from the planet where the love energy from the central sun is directed to this planet. Um, and then, you know, there are higher aspects, but to get back to, to this, um, if we become ascended masters, we provide a plug-in. When increased light is put onto the planet, it creates the chaos where there is resistance and the rapid changes. It's not comfortable. It's, no, it's not always fun living in California or wherever, you know, because it's, it's like a roller coaster. So. If, however, it comes in through and out through the heart of a man or a woman, now the influence of it is diffuse. It is a lonely place to be. I will tell you that right off the bat, okay? Because um, everyone that comes in your environment experiences what it's like to be in, in a zero electromagnetic field. And immediately, all their worst fears manifest, all their insecurities manifest, everything that they, that they have that is not in the light comes in their face. And people can't stay around me a long time. My staff try, but they can't. Ask, ask Larry. He comes from the same state and we've been good buddies. We were sent on a quest by Spirit to Peru to plead for this planet because the Orions have placed a pathogen in her etheric body to wipe out all the plants. He has a connection with Pan. I hardly knew him and I had to borrow him from his wife and ask him to go with me to Peru. And bless her soul, she let him go without even knowing me. And I said, God, why am I bringing him? Do you know he snores? <laughs> I mean, why do I have to take Larry Graydeck? Aha, when I got there, every time we were doing ceremony, he pulled in the presence of the God of nature of our planet which is Pan. I left with a lot of respect and a deep abiding love and I will lay my life down for that man. But ask Larry what my life is like. Everybody that works around me for even a little while goes nuts and people keep saying, I mean, why are you thinking orderly thoughts and walking in chaos? I said, I'm not actually, they're walking in chaos. I'm, I'm walking in balance. I, I don't have the chaos, they do. But it's a people in my environment. It's hard on my kids. It's hard on anybody that even remotely tries to be in your environment for long. But still, the change that occurs in them is more gentle than the increased love being directly poured onto them. It is your sacred duty to become ascended masters. The upside of these exciting times we're going into is that this information is available to you. The complete right brain roadmap of ascension is in my, my levels one, two, and what, tomorrow I teach level three of ascension. You can now overcome all things. The energies are here to aid you. It will take a wave of determination. And when you become an ascended being, you raise the consciousness of every man, woman, and child upon the planet. And when you pass through the first stage, 
the memory of any trauma in your life is erased from your cellular structure. People say, you cannot have suffered. What do you know about telling me? You know, I've suffered terribly. Oh my gosh, God bless me with so many sufferings, I cannot even name them. Physical, I mean, every way you can think of. I've been through na rapes at knife point. I've been through the works. I've been through the works. I've been through destitution and physical pain that's excruciating for years. How many incarnations have you had been married? Um, this is only the second time that I have come in as a mortal. I came in 2,000 years ago. My name was Sophia. And this is only the second time I've come in as a mortal. We came in before to reestablish the 13 facets of the dodecahedron. We came in as immortals. Those are the 13 white buffalo calf women that the Sioux still remember. When we left, we left the programming of the facets in 13 crystal skulls. They are coming out again. So, um, the thirteenth one is to be discovered for, from by a woman that comes from the south. It's sitting waiting in a cave in the Maya area. It's where the bandoleros are and things. It's waiting. Um, it has to be toned this, down. There's going to be four crystal skulls in the western race, September the sixteenth. You know, there are many I'm crystal skulls. The whole day. And these are from um, America. Oh, they're coming here, honey? American tribe. I mean, elders are coming yeah. here. And there's two from Australia come. Oh, oh that is extremely powerful so to have them at once. Know about mm -hmm. it, when is it coming? Um, September the 16th, Wednesday evening in Glastonbury. Oh. But there's a whole day on the following Saturday. Do go and, and feel them. Um, Do go and feel them. them. Much more freely because there's a whole day at. Um, um, at Horn Farm. Does anybody know Horn Farm Cobra? If you will please speak to her afterwards, get all the information, I highly recommend that you go. There are many crystal skulls. They discovered an entire master set of crystal skulls that clearly prove that ma many of our origins are from the star system of Sirius. They discovered it when they opened the, the paw of the Sphinx on the 4th of December 1995. Remember today I showed you how these lie on, the, on that logarithmic spiral to where the pranic tube goes through the earth? Remember I showed you that? When Sirius rose on the 4th of December 1995, the Egyptian government opened it. They've been waiting for that day. And they found uh, they have 201 objects that they have catalogued and tabulated and not told us about. And part of them is a master set of skulls. There was a piece I didn't answer. Which piece was it? The seven percent. Uh -huh. What level do they have to be? Do they have to be ascended masters? No, they don't. They have to cease from fear. Sorry? They have to cease fearing. They have to be fearless. If that is the case, they have gone through the first gate in the first level of ascension, which is life eternal, which is the gate of love because love and fear are opposites. When you fear, your heart is closed. And you have to be fearless to go through the gate of love, which is the first of three gates that you go through in the first phase, which is life eternal. During life eternal, the very suffering, the memory of suffering in your life is erased. In the second levels, the second part, which is life more abundant, which means that in the first part, you have now mastered your thoughts. You, because you've mastered your thoughts, you have mastered yourselves. You have mastered the atomic structure of your own body. Now in life more abundant, you start to master the outside circumstances so that you become the word. Centers in your body start to open up so you can say to a deformed child, Be thou healed, and it is so. You become the Word. You become one with your higher self's intent. Then outside things start to fall in place for you. Everything you walk in absolute and complete grace. Everything is exactly the way it should be every second of the day. Um, during that stage, even the effects of your wrongdoing will be erased. If you made mistakes in raising your eldest child, <laughs> phew, gone. That is unconditional love. Yes. How do you manage to stay 
without any density field. Without what? Density, negative density field, whatever. It's by turning the vision right side up. Because what is density or negativity is a construction of the universal flow of energy. And the construction comes through incorrect perception. When you talk about someone having purity, what you really mean is clarity of vision. And when you see clearly, the, the other things are like mist that disappears. So, I think we have to close. She's got wonderful things planned for us, so. I'll close with prayer. Can I do that? Okay. In the name of God and by the power of the Christ that flows through me, as it flows through you, may this day all these here present receive an initiation. May their nervous systems be altered to receive greater light at a rate that is comfortable for them. This day, may their vision expand. May they be quickened. And may their hearts open wide that the healing energy of Christ consciousness may flow freely through their heart to help uplift and heal the suffering world. May all those who come in contact with these, my beloved beings of light, my brothers and sisters, be altered by their presence. We ask this night that as we do the sacred ceremonies upon this holy place, that the Ascended Masters of Light and the Archangels of Heaven attend us. It is our intent to keep this planet stable upon her course. It is our intent through bringing our own lives in balance to prevent the polar shift. May we see clearly all that which lies behind the appearances, that we may see the innocence, that we may see with the eyes of a god and a goddess. By the power of the light, I protect all those here present, and I offer my life for theirs should any harm them. In the name of my Master, Jesus the Christ, I seal these blessings upon your heads. So be it. Amen. Thank you very much for this time. Get a hug. <laughs> 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 um, to, tonight, before we go up, um, we'll, we'll try to meet as close to 10.30 as we can and give everybody time to, to get prepared. But uh, I just wanted to kind of give a background um, or something for us to focus on while we can all hear. Um, when we go up to the tumulus, um, if we can all get into a circle <coughs> and try to have alternating male and female. Um, we've been talking all evening about the balance between the male and the female. And this is a time when we're able to consciously bring it onto the planet. And in our, um, as we're meditating, we're going to be doing several things. Uh, we're going to have a gong to begin with, which is in tune with the earth. And then we will... <laughs>
and then as a group, um, to focus on connecting to the heart of the earth and connecting it within our own hearts and joining it in a, in a circle clockwise with everyone in the group. And that will link us and create this pillar. Um, after, after we do that, um, then we wanted to have uh, toning with everyone. And I was hoping you could explain a little bit about the background of it. We, we talked about it today. Um, it's, see if I can remember, El Ka Lim On. And each, each syllable, El Ka Li and Om, correspond with a different element. And if it's repeated 256 56. times, um, what happens? The sky is open. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> El Ka Lim Om is in the universal language of light. Ka is fire, Om is wind, Lim is water, and El is earth. Lim with the M. And so El Ka Lim Om said four times to the power of four, bring these four elements in balance within your own body. I did this with my class in Portland. Um, and after I was done, some of them rushed to the toilet. Some of them had hot flushes. Some of them had to, yeah, <laughs> some of them had to drink gallons of water. Some of them were cold. I mean, it was unbelievable, the responses, but they felt completely cleared. Now, today I spoke to my class about it, and she asked if we could do that tonight. And so that is what we will be doing. We will be bringing the elements in balance within our bodies. But here's the thing. We're working with the earth tonight. It is vitally important to bring the elements in balance within the earth. We have entered the glyph of Muluk for one year since um, June the 26th.